Welcome to today's episode of Pocket Pearls, where we talk about GBS guidelines. I have Dr. Better here with me, one of our attendings at Christiana Hospital. Good morning. We are talking about GBS because in June of 2019, ACOG came out with brand new GBS guidelines. Why are GBS guidelines important? GBS guidelines are important because GBS is the leading cause of newborn infection. What happens if we don't screen and treat for GBS? In the absence of treatment, about 1-2% to 2 of neonates will have early onset GBS disease. Okay. What are the new screening guidelines? The new screening guidelines say that a vaginal rectal swab should be performed from 36 and 0 sevenths through 37 and 6 sevenths weeks gestation. Okay. Who should be screened? All women should be screened except for women with previous invasive GBS disease or have GBS bacteria at any point in the pregnancy. Why don't we screen those women? We don't screen those women because the thought is that the for the GBS bacteria that the colonization is so high that we don't need to screen and it's safer to treat. And then with the history of invasive GBS disease, it's the same principle that the risk is so high that it's safer to treat. That makes sense. What do I do about a patient who presents in his GBS unknown? So if a patient is GBS unknown, you would treat based on a number of factors. The first being is if they were preterm, less than 37 weeks gestation. You would also treat if they were full term, but ruptured for more than 18 hours, showed signs of infection like a maternal fever greater than 38 degrees, or if they were GBS positive in a previous pregnancy. How is that different than the previous guidelines? In previous guidelines, we would only treat if the history was a neonate with infect, affected by early onset disease or invasive disease. Now, we would treat even if the mom had GBS positive colonization during her pregnancy, but not necessarily an affected neonate. Okay, very interesting. What if I have a patient who presents with, say, P-PROM and has a culture that's performed and is negative? That's an interesting question. According to the new guidelines, we would still treat if they were GBS unknown on presentation, even if their intrapartum culture came back as negative. How long is the testing valid for? Five weeks. Okay. How do I treat someone who's GBS positive? You treat someone with GBS that's GBS positive with IV antibiotics. What's the antibiotic of choice? The antibiotic of choice is penicillin. Is there a specific dose of penicillin or how long I'm supposed to treat the patient for? Yes, you are supposed to use five million units IV bolus followed by 2.5 million units every four hours until delivery. When I was an intern on the labor floor, I was told not to break someone's water until they were penicillin adequate. Is that still something that I should be cautious of? That's a very good question. According to the new guidelines, our interventions during labor should not change based on someone's GBS positivity or their adequacy of treatment. Okay, and if I remember reading correctly, um, there's some suspicion that even with, even after a treatment with two hours of penicillin, there's benefit to prophylaxis, not just four. According to the new guidelines, four hours is still the standard of care to show adequacy. However, there has been some evidence to show that there is adequacy at two hours. What if my patient has a penicillin allergy? If your patient has a penicillin allergy, it is very important to determine what that allergy is as that will guide your antibiotic choice. What are my alternative antibiotic choices? If the patient has a low risk for anaphylaxis, then your antibiotic choice should be ANSEF. Okay, and what if the risk for anaphylaxis is pretty high? If you're, if you're worried about the risk of anaphylaxis, then you should check the sensitivities on your GBS culture. Okay. Um, what if I don't have sensitivities? If you didn't perform sensitivities on your GBS culture, then the recommendation is to use vancomycin. Is the dosing recommendation different than the previous guideline? Yes, so the recommendation for vancomycin dosing is now weight-based and the frequency has changed. 
So Dr. Better, if I understand correctly, there are some pretty significant changes to help us reduce the amount of GBS disease we have in newborns. We've now started to screen or recommend to screen from 36 to 37 weeks so that our culture is valid for five weeks till our post dates delivery. We also recommend now that you treat any woman at term who's GBS unknown but has had a prior GBS colonization in a previous pregnancy. But penicillin still remains the treatment of choice. Is that correct? That's correct, Gamar.